From a 610 area code. Who's this? Where are you calling from? That's the White Calls, White Line. Hey. Guys? Yeah. It's Mike. Mike? Oh, it's Mike. Mike, from, yeah, Mike from Pennsylvania. Oh, thank God. Where have you been, Mike? Uh, well, I was running a campaign. Oh, okay. <laughs> Give, oh, I was a little busy. Us. All right. Well, oh. how did you do? Uh, we lost uh, just outside of a recount, 49-51. <laughs> oh. So, pretty tough. Sorry pretty to hear tough that. loss. I, we, sh- we should talk more about it because... Um, it, uh, it's a pretty interesting uh, story. Um, we had the only nationally endorsed Our Revolution candidate in uh, Pennsylvania. So uh, there was a big effort on both sides of the aisle to, to beat him. So they, they managed it. <laughs> we even had a former chair of the Democratic Party endorsed the other candidate. Really? The Republican. So, yeah. It's a pretty... Pretty crazy story. I could I could tell more about it, but um, pretty shocking shit went down. They spent more on the on this state senate race than they did on the congressional race here. Even though our congressional race was the top targeted one of the top targeted races. <clears throat> so why why do, we, why do you I think... think they had like twenty five pieces of mail <laughs> sent uh, against mm-hmm. our, including they also def- they just made up whole cloth that um, our candidate didn't pay taxes. So we had to sue for a libel, and then they had to take the ads down. But <laughs> so it was a pretty, pretty insane campaign. Well, Mike, um, but why, but why, did, why were Democrats afraid of, of a state Senate seat going to someone, I mean, presumably, right, the too, uh, too far to the left? For the, the, or was it, was, it, was it the politics, or was it the not part of the sort of um, maybe the grift or graft uh, network that they had established? So, you know, I think... Uh, local dom- local effects probably pr- predominated because we have this um, special tax zone. You were just talking about Amazon, but there's something that we have here in Allentown called the Neighborhood Improvement Zone, which basically just gives unlimited taxpayer dollars to a couple developers, and it pays down their debt so they can borrow money, and then the taxpayer just pay their debt, and they keep what they bought. Uh, it's like an unprecedented... Uh, tax scheme um that <laughs> so you we basically created a billionaire using um taxpayer dollars so there's a lot obviously like uh, a former state representative who's now a uh, democrat who's now a tobacco lobbyist um also came out to endorse the republican because he helped craft this neighborhood improvement zone as is what it's called uh i don't know if you remember but we had our mayor of the city of Allentown was just convicted and he went to jail in October on 47 counts of corruption uh, surrounding the, this, this issue. So there was kind of like this, I hate to say both party cabal locally. Right. Um, and uh, it, so it was, it was pretty, uh, pretty crazy. Um, well, pretty hard to race. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh, um, it's it's okay. The city of Allentown will be in. They're going to have like a big financial collapse next year. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's being defeated. But okay. Uh, so, anyway, yeah. So I didn't mean to call about that. I just okay. To give you well, it was a tough. It was a tough one. I needed to take a week. I um, understand. I understand. Well deserved. Uh, sorry you didn't win. So give <laughs> us. So Pennsylvania, if I'm not mistaken, sure. four four pickups. Is that right? So yeah, well, kind of. We had we were up at six, um, and that's because Connor Lamb won that big, really Trump district out west. And with the new districting, he was headed against I think the chair of the House Freedom Caucus, Keith Rothfuss, and that was the only incumbent on an incumbent race in the entire country. And Connor Lamb was able to be victorious, defeat him, and we picked up three more seats. Unfortunately, um, we lost the other progressive candidate who was running in Pennsylvania, Scott Wallace. Um, he in PA1 in Bucks County, he lost 51-49. Uh, 
as well. The AFL-CIO and the Democratic establishment endorsed basically the Republicans, <laughs> um, Brian Fitzpatrick there, um, which is kind of really interesting. Like, and not to go back to to my race, but the teachers union actually endorsed the Republican, even though he supports voucher schools. Mm. And um, uh, that's a really good question. Uh, I, I I hate to to get into this right now because. My thoughts are not totally coalesced on this. Right. And I just want to spout without thinking deeper. But I believe that there's a strong effort to try to defeat progressives um, in, in, in the country. Uh, and they're use, it's sort of like when Planned Parenthood and they're all endorsed Hillary, even though Hillary had spoke about banning late-term abortions. The policies didn't matter. It's more like... You don't want to, put, you know, put the, there's this kind of like lobbyist class, people that work as a professional lobbyist, and some of them work for supposedly progressive organizations, but they have, you know, the a, a class interest in in defending kind of the status quo, the way things work now, and somebody like these progressives <laughs> might kind of break down that lobbyist class influence, and. So the, the gains right. in Pennsylvania were less than they might have been had the Democratic Party put all of their weight behind the quote, Democratic candidates. You know, I, um, I, I, I mean, I will say this. Like, do. I don't like my sense is in the context of the Clinton race. I think some of that may be the case, but I also think some of it was like we're going to get in on the ground floor and support someone who we think is going to be the definite winner, as opposed to a race that's, that's you know, what I used to think fifty-one forty-nine. Yeah, but that's what I used to think. Uh, after this year, I don't believe that anymore because there's really no excuse for endorsing Republicans in very close races. Absolutely not. Um, what what what's the logic of the AFL-CIO endorsing a Republican over a progressive Democrat in a race that ended up fifty nine fifty one forty nine zero? There is none zero. Uh, so you know if you assume they have influence over one or two percent of the voters, which is probably an underestimation. Right. They basically gave the win to the Republican. Yeah, and the endorsement, people should know, it's not just a question of an endorsement, it's right. It's like what how much of an effort? That's indicative of the effort that they're going to put in. I mean, sometimes you'll Correct. see an endorsement and they won't put any effort in, and so it's a hollow endorsement. But if they're actually going to go out of their way to make the endorsement, you know they're putting effort behind it. Yeah, the AFL-CIO has a strong field program. They do communication, paid communication to their members. Um, you know, and if you're a Republican, like especially in, in one of these seats where they need Democratic votes, that gives them a path to victory because right. they say, well, I'm, I'm such a moderate, reasonable Republican. I even got the unions to support me. And it seems to be happening selectively against the most progressive candidates who are the most strongly in favor of, of stuff like that. Well, we should say that or, my understanding is that all of the Our Revolution candidates, except for Porter, we just mentioned her in California's 45th, lost. I think there was nine. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't, Katie, you know, I, will, I, I don't know if, what you're referring to with Katie. I'm, I'm a big fan of hers. Um, I think she might have been referring to the Bush tax, uh, I'm sorry, the Trump tax cuts got rid of the local and state um, yeah, she was uh, talking about. Or, yeah, yeah, she was talking about the right. about. So that the, hurts people from California and New York. States. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So you know, bringing that back actually would be good for progressives because it gives progressive states more fiscal flexibility to do things. Um, well, and spend it's money not, without it being. A, it's not fiscal flexibility. What it does is it decreases the political pressure. Uh, to to lower sure. taxes, uh, yes. But I I mean I I understand. But that is, it is. Uh, I'm just saying it's a shift to in the general election from where she was in the primary that people should just be aware of. I'm not saying that uh, I'm not. I mean I, I I think just it is a it is an example of what she feels is necessary. It wasn't something she was pushing in the primary. Let's put it that way. I mean, she is running in a seat that's I, like never been won by a Democrat. I, 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 I 
just wanted to put people on notice. It's not one of those things you want to, okay. you know, that's, uh, you know, who knows? She maybe goes statewide. You know, she goes back to her primary roots. I'm just putting it out there. Um, By the way, to keep it on brand, I want to disagree with John from San Antonio. Okay. Uh, oh, really? Gerrymandering, John, gerrymandering is not underestimated. In Pennsylvania, for example, gave the Republicans a 21-point advantage um, in our seats until they struck it down. The geographic advantage is about two points. So that explains why we you could say that the geographic advantage is why Fitzpatrick won uh, that one seat. Whereas in prior races, they would win four or five seats they shouldn't have had is due it, to the gerrymandering. And if you it, do it statewide, you're talking about like 15 to 20 seats, not five to 10. So, wait, so in 2012, we would have had the House had there not been gerrymandering. In 2012, uh, uh, the we, U.S. The Democrats would have won the House. Yeah, had they not been for the gerrymandering that was had been completed in what, 2010. What is Pennsylvania now? Nine nine. Nine nine. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, listen. Even though you know statewide we had a big win. Hey, Mike, I got a question for you. How yeah, about I gerrymander right. my foot up your ass? Don't you ever question my <laughs> political analysis again? <laughs> And I was just wondering what you thought about that. All right. Well, Mike, look, get your thoughts in order and let's have some of these yeah. uh, extended conversations. Now you're sitting at home for a couple well, we, of days. We can have an rest. offline conversation, too. Okay. It's pretty insane. All right. Oh, it'll be <laughs> offline. Don't worry about that. All right, Mike, uh, good yeah. to hear from you. Uh, sorry things did not work out in uh, in in your neck of the woods. but. Uh, and, uh, before you let me go, I only thank the majority report because a lot of people from the community helped and supported Mark, uh, the candidate, Mark Pinsley. And, you know, it really raised him to another level. And he got a lot of extra support nationally because of the majority report community supporting him early. So I wanted to thank you guys for all the help you had given me. And I'm sorry I let you down, but. Well, you didn't let anybody down. Mark. It was close. But uh, we're all very it. disappointed in you. I expected nothing different. <laughs> John from San Antonio had that right, race guys. cult. All right, thanks, buddy. Thanks. Peace, calling from a uh, 267 area code. Who's this? Where are you calling from? Uh, yes, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Yes, this is Steve from Pennsylvania. Steve from that. Pennsylvania. Uh, are your thoughts about uh, what happened in Pennsylvania divergent from uh, Mike in Pennsylvania? Uh, actually, I am from Northeast Philadelphia, so I uh, know exactly what Mike's talking about in terms of the lack of Democratic support um, from the state and even national level from uh, the Democratic Party. Um, I helped Wallace out, Scott Wallace, who ran in the uh, first district against Brian Fitzpatrick. Um, Fitzpatrick's a uh, incumbent. Uh, Republican who brands himself as a as a moderate, uh, when in reality he, as usual, votes along with the Trump agenda. Actually, 83 percent of the time, I believe. So, Wallace didn't get any support. Um, he's actually the um, grandson of uh, Henry Wallace, um, so he does come from money, um, but he did put a lot of his own money into uh, the campaign. Um, you know, he had a lot of progressive policies, um, you know, didn't agree with him across the board on every single thing. But, um, you know, unfortunately, he lost. Um, I believe the final tally was I think that's what Mike was talking about. I wasn't listening. Yep. But, oh. um, I think it was 51 49 or somewhere. He in there. said um, that Wallace did not get the uh, AFL CIO endorsement, didn't get the teachers endorsement. Didn't get support from national um, No, uh, yeah, the, the, Brian Fitzpatrick. Um, he, he took the seat from his brother, and uh, he had he had the support from the unions. Um, Why? And uh, you know the the, the the Democrats just didn't they just didn't support uh, they just didn't come out for Wallace. I mean, Tom Wolf, uh, you know, took the governorship pretty easily. Um, but you just didn't see, I mean, this was a district that was, you know, it was flippable. I mean, 
But it why didn't the national? Why didn't? Why didn't? Why do the unions? Why are the unions supporting? Um, Fitzpatrick. Why would they do that? I don't know. I don't know. And you know, for some reason, I mean, you know, it it just became. You know, it just wasn't. It just wasn't talked about. I mean, you never heard this district being talked about in terms of. You know, the Democrats putting a lot of support uh, towards it. That's strange. So. Well, we're going to see if we can get um, some uh, reporters on it to see. If we can maybe dig up uh, what the what the story, if there's another story behind there. It's interesting. Yeah, um, I mean, Pennsylvania is still a pretty Democratic state um, overall, but, you know, especially around the Philadelphia area. Um but, you know, there was a chance there. I mean, this is a district that is, is mostly in the sub, is in the suburbs. And, you know, you, you kept hearing during the, cam- uh, you know, during the campaigns about, you know, these suburban Republicans that are in danger. And that fits the bill exactly for what this district is. So, uh, but what, in, what, what district again is that, Fitzpatrick? This is in the first district. Yeah. Okay. So it's Bucks County outside of Philadelphia. All right, I'm going to ask is, around um, about that. It sounds very strange to me uh, why the union would do that. I'm curious about it. And, I, and, and on election night, I mean, they, they were, you know, I was following MSNBC. I was following you guys and, and, and some other outlets, but you, you barely heard anything. I think Kornacki mentioned this district like once, um, you know, towards the end of the night. But um, it's just, you know. It, it just shows the strategy is just messed up. I mean, well, I wonder what the and, story is. I'm, uh, I'm asking. I'm going to ask some people. So, uh, 